What's up and welcome to Sam Miller Science where you're joining me just over a decade into my personal journey of working to bridge the gap between metabolism, macros, muscle, and medicine, all while helping coaches scale the impact that they desire and deserve. If you are here, thank you so much for listening and for trusting me to help you elevate your coaching game or to lead you in your transformation to realize your true potential. In either case, each week I'll be sharing my methods, models, and message to serve as leverage for your specific goals. Without further ado, let's get on to today's show. Today we're talking about five ways to monitor your progress without relying on the scale and those tricky LBS. Your weight in pounds, a lot of times it can get into people's heads and really be either discouraging or distracting in their health and fitness journey. Now, I do think there's some work that can be done to improve our overall mindset around our scale weights and the ability to track this solely as a data point instead of getting very fixated on this single number. But inside today's episode and show, what I'm gonna be breaking down is some helpful ways that you can track your progress aside from just relying on the scale. Now, some of these are a little bit more intermediate to advanced. Other ones can be deployed even if you're a beginner and just getting started. Plus, I have a helpful bonus tip that you have to wait for all the way till the end so you can kind of work around this scale weight issue and begin to track that number without it being as much of a distraction or something that's disheartening because some people will see their weight on the scale and it impacts their subsequent behaviors throughout the week, which then creates this vicious cycle. As we change our behavior, we don't do the things we need to do. Our scale weight doesn't change positively and around and around we go. So we need to create some little wins and small victories in other departments. Sometimes people refer to these as non-scale victories. And once we kind of rack those up, it allows us to have some of that delayed gratification accumulate to where then maybe we do see a positive change in the scale. Now, oftentimes what's happening in a transformation journey, if you start lifting weights, if you improve your nutrition, we know that there's this thing called body recomposition that can happen, especially if you're newer to training. So if you're newer to training and you begin to have some positive adaptations from the stimulus of resistance training, there's a pretty good chance that you're putting on some muscle, you could even be potentially losing some fat. Now your nutrition is gonna play a huge role here, but we won't get into the exact strategies and tactics today. I do have over 600 podcast episodes that break down nutrition, certain health and lifestyle practices that can help you, whether your goal is to improve your physique, live longer, or perform better. Now for today, we're talking more about what would we actually look at and track in order to keep our head in the right place, continue to make progress, and have valuable data for decision-making when it comes to our transformation. So the first one here is gonna be a little bit of an unconventional recommendation and is typically only used by intermediate to advanced coaches. I want you to stay with me because I do have some very practical tools that can be applied even if you're a beginner, and we'll get to those in just a bit. So the first one is going to be lab testing or blood chemistry. Now you can have this done either when you go to have an annual physical or work with your physician. You can also work with someone who's maybe more specialized in nutrition and metabolism that is able to pull these markers for you and kind of correlate how it might connect to your nutrition and your training. For example, if you were on a weight loss journey and you were to improve your metabolic health, you would see changes in your fasted blood glucose. You would also see changes in maybe your triglycerides or cholesterol. You'd see improvements in these markers that are reflective of your internal health. And sometimes these markers change before we see drastic differences in your scale weight or even things like your uh, photos or the way that you look in the mirror. So when it comes to labs, there's a number of different markers that we can test and it really would depend on what your goal is. I have a few different podcast series on this, uh, different ways that we can apply labs in the real world. And I also have some episodes on overrated or underrated labs. But if you're interested, if you're a health professional and you're interested in how this connects to someone's nutrition and metabolism, I have a series called Metabolism School 101. This is an introductory two-part video series that helps to connect how macronutrient changes or changes changes with our diet and nutrition connect to internal health and physiology changes related to certain markers that connect to our metabolism, overall hormonal health, and so much more. So you can check that out. Make sure we include a link for you guys, either in the show notes if you're listening on audio or if you're watching on video, we'll include a link in the description of this video. So labs can be used whether you have a weight loss goal, performance goal, or just an aesthetic goal. Um, so if we're looking at fat loss, for example, we talked about that if you went from potentially being a little bit overweight to losing a healthy amount of body fat, we'd see improvements in some of those markers. Now let's say you were looking to reverse diet. 
We could potentially see changes in your hormonal profile if you were previously under eating. So if you were someone who is chronic dieting and we get you on a proper nutritional strategy and you're following that, there's a good chance that we might see improvements in certain hormones, whether it's related to reproductive health or thyroid health, we might see an increase in some of those markers. For example, when someone is under eating, it's not uncommon to see a down regulation in thyroid hormones. Uh, for example, free T3 might be a little bit lower. So potentially, if we move to a different season of nutrition or different phase of periodization, we might actually see improvements in those lab values. Another one, for example, could be testosterone. Testosterone and free testosterone may be in a better place when you're eating maintenance calories. So this is a great example of where you may not be in an intense diet or you may not be adding tons and tons of calories in a calorie surplus where you feel like you're gaining a ton of size or muscle, but that change would be reflected in your internal health markers. Additionally, beyond labs, we have to consider our quality of life and biofeedback. One of the first things that we'll notice if you're actually tuning into your body and paying attention in your transformation is when you make changes to your food, you make changes in terms of exercise, while you might have a little bit of soreness at first, if you're just getting started as a beginner, or if you're someone who's more interme intermediate to advanced and you start a new program, there might be a transitional period where you don't feel perfect because you're adding new stimulus, but eventually we may see improvements in things like our energy levels. If you improve the quality of your food, for example, let's say you're eating a lot of uh, foods that were maybe more along the lines of the standard American diet or fast food or things that were not prepared at home, you might notice improvements in your digestion when you switch to single ingredient whole foods. When you begin working out regularly, walking, getting outside, this can lead to improvement in mood and your stress levels, potentially even improve your sleep and help with your sleep wake cycle if you're getting that natural sunlight each day. So there's a lot of things that can improve in biofeedback. If you're familiar with my content, you'll know that I track this as SHREDS, which stands for sleep, hunger, recovery, energy, digestion, and stress. A great example on the hunger front would be those single ingredient whole foods typically have a little bit more food volume than if we were to grab some type of packaged food or multi-ingredient food at the store. And so by doing this, we have better regulation of our hunger, our cravings, energy levels, and more stable blood sugar. So that assumes that we're using the nutritional strategy that's right for us, but biofeedback sometimes can be an indicator of progress and we can feel it subjectively in terms of our quality of life long before we see massive differences in the scale. The next thing we can check, and this is available to just about everyone, is going to be our body tape and body composition. So body tape is basically just something like a waist measurement, arm measurement, you could use your thigh. You would pick three or potentially even four sites on your body that you could track regularly. And this works well, especially if someone is looking to track body composition, but maybe isn't consistent or has a hard time looking at that scale weight or even progress photos, right? So this is a way that you can get a data point. Let's say you're a coach or a health professional, you're working with someone, body tape is a good in-between and gets you started towards tracking body composition because sometimes things like calipers, DEXA scans, underwater weighing, those aren't always super feasible and accessible on a weekly basis. And things like bioelectrical impedance are really not that accurate. So in order to give us a very cheap, affordable and accessible tool, we can deploy body tape and use that in conjunction with progress photos and scale wait for a client that's you know comfortable doing that or you know we potentially just use the body tape to get us started and see some improvements because a lot of times people will notice changes in their dress size even if there's not a huge change in scale weight so for women it could be dress size maybe for guys it's a belt that they're wearing with their pants or jeans so we can use body tape as a proxy for that body composition, even if we're not regularly getting skin calipers uh, or skin caliper assessment, DEXA scan, underwater weighing. And again, some people do have things like in-body scans, but bioelectrical impedance is not necessarily our most accurate measure of body composition. So we need to be mindful of that when incorporating it for a client in their tracking. The next thing we can use is going to be biometrics, things like blood pressure, heart rate, and HRV. If you're improving your cardiovascular fitness, you may see a lower resting heart rate. If you are improving the ability to manage your stress, if you're eating better foods, and you're improving your overall metabolic health and cardiometabolic health, we might see a reduction in blood pressure. So some people may have blood pressure upwards of 120 over 80, and by improving their nutrition, improving their exercise habits, they may see a reduction in that blood pressure. This is typically for folks who are pre-diabetic, maybe on their way to metabolic syndrome, or they're overweight or obese. Getting healthier and starting these habits, you may see the change in blood pressure even before you see drastic differences in terms of long-term scale weight. Um, and this will really depend on the person. Some people will see 
you know, a change and kind of in conjunction with one another. So as we lose weight, blood pressure improves, but some people notice those improvements in their metabolic health, internal health markers, even before they are head over heels, you know, overjoyed with their progress photo. So understand before and after is only gonna show so much and it's surface level change. And while I'm all for people having aesthetic goals, improving their physique and body composition, there's still something to be said about having better cardiometabolic health, living longer and being around the people that you love and you care about um, and also taking care of yourself. So I think that's huge. So we can use biometrics like blood pressure and heart rate. Those are very affordable. You can even learn how to take your heart rate either on your wrist or using uh, your neck as a potential source for that pulse can also use HRV with something like an aura ring. Some people also like the whoop device. You can also use a chest strap for heart rate while you're exercising and pair it with some type of fitness watch. That would be another option. In addition to biometrics, we do have the ability to take progress photos. Now, depending on someone's experience in working with a coach or where they're at in their own transformation, we may want to include a certain frequency of progress photos and begin to incorporate that with these other data points. Now, ideally someone's providing multiple data points, especially if you're a health and fitness professional, being able to synthesize this data and make effective decisions is a great way to add value for your clients and make the best possible decisions. But for someone who's maybe new to this, progress photos are super common in transformation challenges. So if you see people doing before and afters or taking a daily progress photo, I do think it can be helpful and effective for accountability purposes and we can work on someone's mindset and relationship with that progress photo over time as we're completing these habits. Uh, another way to do this is you can either uh, do a video and basically place your phone, go through essentially a side progress photo, front progress photo, and back progress photo. Just simply take the videos, leave them on your phone, and then you can go back through after a longer period of time and take screenshots from those videos and create that comparison. Maybe if you tracked it every single week, you could look back after 30 days or 60 days and you'd have the ability to have basically a longer time horizon for this particular data point because progress photos day to day may be influenced by things like your hydration, sodium, the timing of your last meal, how you slept the night before, the exercise or training that you completed, the amount of inflammation that you have. So progress photos are subject to a number of different variables, which is why we want to be sure to understand how training, sodium, meal timing, all of those things can play into our progress photos. Now, they're still a great tool. I encourage people to use them, whether you're working with a health professional or not, and especially if you have some type of physical goal. So physique athletes, bodybuilders, there's a reason that they take progress photos. It really enables you to see what's changing. Is it working out? Do we need to work on some sort of, let's say you do have very specific aesthetic goals. This is also going to help you in terms of your training, identify potentially weak body parts, things you need to change with your training program design. From a nutrition perspective, it gives us an idea of our progress in terms of fat loss. Even if maybe we don't see this massive change in scale weight, if we have a lot of body recomposition going on, you're going to look more impressive in that uh, photo or basically what you see in the mirror. Now, some people do have a hard time as far as whether it's stemming from maybe a history of body dysmorphia, looking in the mirror, they may not actually see that change. Sometimes having something physical like a video or a photo and being able to have someone like a coach provide uh, unbiased feedback on that can be very valuable. So I do think that's a great ancillary tool there. And as a bonus tip, which I mentioned as promised, I said in the beginning of the episode, I'd have a bonus tip for you guys. If someone does struggle with looking at their weight in pounds, many people are unfamiliar with their weight in kilograms. So a great transition tool is to have someone start tracking their weight in kilograms, even if they're not super comfortable looking at their weight in pounds. So over time, we track in kilos, the coach can convert it. So if you're a health or fitness professional, you can incorporate kilos for someone. And that helps, especially if they have a certain fixation with a specific number. Like I've seen this before, it's true for men and women, but women who will say, oh, I was 130 pounds when I went to my high school prom or something, or 125 pounds when I got married. And they will be hyper fixated on that particular number, regardless of how they look in a progress photo, regardless of their biofeedback, their lab improvements, you know, how great they feel, how great they're performing. We can use this bonus weight uh, in kilos as a way to, and the reason I say bonus weight is just additional tracking tools. So we're still using scale weight. We're just simply going to change the function. You would buy a scale that can read uh, instead of pounds. It has the ability to get your weight in kilograms. So kilograms is typically used 
Uh, in a number of other different countries, but in the United States and Western world, it's more common that people are using pounds. So just switch that on the scale or buy a scale that has the ability to track in kilograms. And then all of a sudden, now you've sort of shifted your mindset around this and most people aren't stepping on the scale and doing kilo math and multiplying times 2.2. Uh, you know, So it makes it a little bit of a good segue from not tracking to tracking. I would recommend tracking your weight in some capacity. It is an important data point for your overall health and is correlated with a number of different comorbidities and different aspects of metabolic disease and deterioration. So you can certainly track that. I will mention on the training side, having some form of tracking in terms of your overall adherence in the gym, progressive overload, doing more reps or adding more weight to the bar if you are resistance training, if you're doing cardiovascular exercise, monitoring things related to, for example, your steps, your heart rate, your mileage or pace. If you are more of an endurance athlete or someone who enjoys cardiovascular activity, that's something that you could do. Or if there's other things that you participate in, tracking the participation and improvements that you have, and even having some sort of rated perceived exertion like RPE or reps in reserve, if you are resistance training, if you perform a movement and it feels easier for you, you're improving, right? So there's a lot of good news and small victories that we can find in a lot of other areas of the transformation besides just looking at the scale. I'm recording this in January of 2024. And it's very common that people get very fixated on losing a specific amount of scale weight. I'm totally fine with people having goals related to their body composition, getting healthier and losing weight if it's the appropriate thing for where they're at with their current body composition and their health. So for example, if someone's 50 pounds overweight, a weight loss goal is appropriate. If someone is already underweight, then that's a different story. We're not encouraging anyone to try to lose additional weight if they're already below kind of a healthy point in terms of someone for their height and activity level. With that said, these are tools that you can use in any particular combination or order. If you are someone who is a health and fitness professional who's looking to become a little bit more advanced with things like using biometrics, using biofeedback, and maybe even incorporating some labs and biochemistry to better understand someone's individual metabolic health, what's going on in terms of their hormones, their digestion, how that connects with things related to stress and their energy intake, calories in and calories out. You'll definitely want to check out the nutrition and metabolism specialization program inside of Metabolism School. You can learn more about that at metabolismschool.com. And as I mentioned, there is a free resource, which is a two-part video series where you can check out an introductory training on how making changes to our nutrition does impact our internal health and how that's reflected by different tests. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If it was valuable for you, please give it a thumbs up if you're watching the video, or you can share the audio by screenshotting it. Tag me in your stories. I'm at Sam Miller Science at just about every major platform. Additionally, make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. If you're on audio, it takes about 10 seconds to leave a five-star rating and review. This goes a long way to support the content that I share here. And while you guys may hear it in each episode, if you have not done that yet, it's a fantastic way to let other people know that the content here is valuable. It also shows your support and allows me and my team to continue to bring you more no-cost content each and every week. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in to today's show, and I will talk to you in the next one.